Hello, I'm very excited to be here and talk about some of the work that my colleagues and I have been doing in Google Brain's machine learning for systems team. Our motivation is that in the past decade, systems and hardware have truly transformed machine learning. And it is now time for machine learning to return the favor and transform the way systems and hardware are designed. Uh, so why do we care about compute? It turns out that it's actually a very important problem. Here are two motivational uh, examples. On the left, uh, the table projects that in order to achieve 1% accuracy on ImageNet, we need 10 to the power 28 gigaflop computational power in co comparison with 10 to the power 14 that we currently use to achieve the state of the art. And the data on the right shows that since 2012, the amount of computational power used in the largest AI runs doubled every 3.4 months. So this growth is exponential and we really need to transform the way we are designing systems and chips to keep up with this demand. Now, if we look into the, a lot of problems in systems and hardware, uh, a lot of these problems are in the form of combinatorial optimization on graph structure data. Uh, for example, compiler optimization, chip placement, data center resource allocation are three instances of these problems uh, in compilers. Input is an XLA or HLO graph, for example, and the objective is some sort of resource scheduling or allocation on the ops of this graph. And that has been the focus of a lot of the research and work we have been up to. And our approach is to take a learning-based uh, uh, approach to optimizing these problems. And we are, mo we are mo very motivated to do so because of these fundamental properties of learning uh, algorithms that they can learn the underlying relationship between the context and optimization metric and implicitly optimize for the, uh, and explore the trade-offs to optimize for the target metrics we care about. The other unique property compared to the baseline is that they can gain experience and can solve more instances of the problem and become experts over time. This is very different from the baseline methods such as branch and bound, hill, climb, hill climbing and such. And, and another uh, property that we like them is that we know how to scale them and how to distribute them across uh, distributed platforms and train models with billions of parameters. Now, the outline of, of this talk is as follows. We're, I'm going to talk about three uh, projects uh, in our team on learning to optimize systems and chips. The first one is learning to optimize device pl placement. So device placement is the problem of taking a computational graph, for example, a neural net, and mapping it onto the hardware devices that we have, such as GPUs, TPUs, or CPU cores. And as you can imagine, this problem is becoming more and more important because uh, the models are getting bigger and bigger. Uh, so our approach to this problem was to pose it as a reinforcement learning problem where we train a policy that takes as input a neural network and a set of available devices, and it outputs an assignment of the ops in the neural net onto the devices that we have. Once this assignment is done, we can evaluate, we can actually run the neural net according to this placement, evaluate the runtime and use it as feedback to update the policy. And we can iterate through this many, many times until the policy gets optimized and outputs optimized solutions. Um, here is an overview of the architecture we use in the, as in the input, we pass the operations in the neural net, information about ty the type of it, whether it's a convolution, LSTM and such, the adjacency information, um, and we pass it to a, a neural net, we, that groups these ops in order to handle the scale. And then we pass this grouping uh, info information into a uh, seek to seek layer, where on the output side, we predict the device uh, that each group uh, should be placed onto. Once all these uh, devices are predicted, of course, they're conditioned on each other. We can have the full placement. We can go ahead and run the graph, measure the runtime, and have that as our reward, reward function, a form of a reward function. In this case, the inverse of the time. 
and use it to update the parameters of this neural net, which uh, models the policy. Here is uh, some results on an, a neural machine translation and a seek to seek model. Uh, and each of the co five colors here shows a different device. Four of them are GPUs and the white one is a CPU. It turns out that, that the policy actually learns to place um, the ops, uh, the embedding uh, layer on the CPU. But the other placement are not very intuitive. But we were getting better results than our baseline method. I'm showing the baseline results on the right, uh, where the, it was designed by the human experts. And the way it was done at the time was to put every layer of this neural net on a different GPU. Um, uh, we tried to understand why we are getting better runtime results. And we profiled the, the runtime of each GPU. And it turned, and here we were placing them on four different GPUs of the same kind. And what we saw is that our the RL approach uh, is really focusing on workload balancing, whereas the, the baseline by expert, even though we were very balanced on the feed forward pass, we weren't as balanced on the, uh, the back prop, which uh, consumes most of the computation. And we were getting this unbalanced uh, workload across the GPUs, and therefore the runtime uh, was super, uh, the runtime for the RL placement was better. Uh, we did the same thing on an inception model, an image model, and each of the colors, again, different colors are different GPUs, and the white one is a CPU. As you can see, the policy did learn some sort of a parallelism across these branches of the, and these are convolution branches in the inception, uh, without us explicitly telling it anything about the parallelism. And in this case, we compared the result with an inception model with a batch size that was uh, uh, one fourth of what we were handling. But we used four copies of this inception model across four GPUs. So in the end, our, we were having the exact same batch size. But on one side, we were doing model parallelism. And on the right side, we were doing data parallelism. So in this case, uh, we were still getting better runtimes than that um, baseline. but. Uh, for sure, we were not doing as good of a job in load balancing because the baseline by design was load balanced. So we looked into memory copies, amount of memory copies that the RL policy does. And it turns out that in this, this case, the policy learned to optimize for reducing the mem copies, whereas the, the uh, data parallel approach had to do a lot of synchronization uh, across the GPUs. So it was very interesting for us to, to see that the policy learns these implicit trade-offs. Um, and our next step was to uh, go and really try to train policies that generalize across different devices, because so far we were really optimizing a policy for a single neural net. Uh, so we could write a objective function as an expected reward over a training set of uh, neural nets. And we got very interesting results. For example, here, um, the dark, uh, the black one shows uh, where the uh, method is uh, trained and customized for a specific um, graph. And the one that is uh, red, uh, the, the red one shows the generalization as zero shot. So we just take the pre-trained policy and at inference uh, do model parallelism on the new neural net. And we got very convincing result in this case. Uh, and uh, a lot of speed ups, like 15 times speed up in search and uh, tens of uh, percent of uh, optimization in actual runtime. Of the, of the neural net. So it was helping in both speeding up the search and also getting better uh, quality of results. And if you're interested, please take a look at these papers that I've listed here. Now, um, the another project that we have uh, focused on, uh, on was learn, uh, and we worked on was learning to partition graphs. Uh, graph partitioning, of course, is an important problem, appears um, over and over in systems and chip-related problems. and uh, Usually, when we deal with a graph partitioning problem, we want to scale down the problem and work on the clusters or partitions rather than individual nodes of the graph. And a classic approach to do so is by optimizing the normalized cuts. What this means is that we want to partition the graph into uh, groups that have roughly the same volume or the same number of nodes in them. And we want to minimize the edges, the number of cuts um, across 
uh, the edges between groups. And here is how we can uh, formulate this normalized cut objective. So our uh, uh, approach was that our the way we wanted to tackle this problem again was with a learning based approach when we can use the context to guide this partitioning. So we took a very simple approach where we uh, passed the node to a neural net and the output of the, the neural net was a prediction of where this node, uh, which cluster or which partition this node belong, belongs to. Uh, so we have this, once we have these probabilities, uh, we can go ahead and write the probability of an edge existing between these two different groups and the probability of the number of, the, of nodes or expected number of nodes in a given partition. Now, in order to train these neural nets, we can rewrite the normalized cut objective given these probabilities, and we can start minimizing the normalized cut objective, which uh, in the end would uh, maximize the balanceness and minimizes the cuts. And here is an example of how this works. By minimizing the cut uh, for this very simple data set of cars and some birds, um, uh, in it, once the loss uh, gets optimized, we can see that the, the neural net uh, assigns a very high probability to the cars being in cluster one and a very high probability to the birds belonging to cluster two. So by the end of this optimization, we can find these clusters uh, and the, the clusters are being formed. And uh, we took this to an, a, further, uh, a step further and thought, uh, what if we can train these models in a way that we can partition graphs at inference? So we train these neural nets on a, a large number of graph data sets and then use it at inference to partition new graphs. So, uh, and for achieving that, we spend a, a lot of time on representation learning and really embedding the information about the graphs to help us with generalization. And we got very interesting results on uh, a variety of data set. Our approach was very different from the existing uh, baselines and we're very excited about this line of work because it not only can generalize it can also easily scale to graphs with millions of nodes and we can uh, control the amount of uh, balanceness and ed and the edges across the graphs very easily if you're interested in this please take a look at uh, some of the papers that I've listed here and we also have an open source uh, github um, repository it's open source in github now, the third work that I'm going to talk about is our work on learning to optimize chip placement. So chip placement is um, uh, one of the, lo a long pole in chip design, and uh, it has to do with taking the graph that describes a chip and mapping the nodes of the graph onto a, a, a canvas such that certain criteria is met, such as power, uh, the uh, runtime and the delay, and uh, we want to also meet the congestion density and other properties. So it's basically like fitting all these elements onto a canvas and making sure that uh, we are meeting the constraints that uh, otherwise we, we won't be able to fabricate the chip. Um, it turns out that this problem is really complex because chips have um, thousands of uh, memories and uh, millions or even billions of standard cells and these are the nodes of this graph that needs to be uh, that need to be placed and here even a simplified version of the problem that I'm going to talk about uh, requires orders of magnitude has orders of magnitude more complexity than chess and go which are two canonical games um, previously solved by RL and learning based methods. And not only that, there has been five decades of research on uh, floor planning and placement, uh, such as partitioning based methods, stochastic hill climbing approaches and analytic solvers. And what we proposed here was the learning based uh, methods. And the way we tackle this problem is, uh, is as, follow, uh, as following. We trained an RL agent that um, starts placing the nodes of the graph uh, one at a time. Uh, so in the beginning, we have an empty canvas. And in each step, the RL agent places the new um, nodes. And once all the, the memory nodes, all the macros of the, uh, of the gra chip graph are placed, we use a force-directed method to place the standard cells, which are the point and very tiny uh, elements of uh, of the chip network. So a force-directed method is known to 
optimize those the placement of those elements well. So we do that, and then we get some estimate of the violent congestion and density of this placement. Once we have that, we uh, give it back to the, we use it as a reward function. We, we use it to update the RL agent policy. So the policy, what it learns is that over time, over various iterations of this placement, um, it learns to optimize its parameters in a way that it produces placement that optimize the final violent congestion and density. Um, now, and our goal, of course, was to make these policies generalized, make them uh, in a way that they become better as they solve on new chips. So we grounded the, the approach to designing these policies first in a uh, supervised method, because our, our intuition was that if this policy is to generalize, it we should at least be able to solve this simpler problem, which is uh, generalization on, uh, on, the, on the wildland congestion and basically reward prediction of a given placement. So we focus on the supervised uh, task of predicting the reward given a placement. We generated a data set, we generated um, the labels for them all with our proxy cost. So it was a very cheap and um, affordable method. Once we developed we develop that, then we um, could easily innovate on the architecture. We came up with this new graph uh, architecture, a graph convolution that could basically take a graph and its placement and predict the violent and congestion. congestion. Once we had this, uh, we could go ahead and use that a uh, module that can really uh, predict the labels easily and generalize as the encoder of our policy. And then on the decoder side, uh, we used a deconvolution layer and we also used a mask to kind of enforce the constraints. So this policy was the, the eventually allowed us to generalize and we believe this will uh, transfer to other gen policy generalization problems. And here to, and is an example to show you how uh, the generalization works on the left, the policy is being trained from scratch to do the placement of the no these nodes that you, you can see here. On the right, we take a pre-trained policy and apply that as inference on the nodes of this uh, RISC-V processor. And as you can see, the pre-trained policy right in the beginning finds some good structure in placing the, the nodes here around the canvas and leaving area for the standard cells in the middle. But it takes the other policy some time to get to that. And here is some data that, that shows that we, we need 30 more hours of uh, training to get what uh, from for training a, a policy from scratch to get to what a pre-trained policy gets to uh, almost right away. So this is very exciting. And also it shows that the pre-trained policy achieves higher quality results. Um, here is the effect of training on larger size. So we are trying, we are pre-training the policy on three different data sets, one with a smaller size, the other one with a medium size on five blocks, and the larger one on 20 blocks. And it's showing that as the policy is exposed to larger data set, it can even at zero shot generate very high quality placement on unseen new data set. Um, and here is another example when on the X left you can see the expert placement on a tpu block uh, and it's blared for confidentiality on the right you can see the ml placer and uh, we achieved these results on 24 hours and ever since then the, the, the we could uh, further reduce the runtime and uh it's very exciting that we can do that uh, in a short amount of time and the baseline actually requires human expert in the loop and take several weeks um here are some par comparisons with the uh, human experts in the loop um, baseline and with the SOTA academic baseline. And what it suggests that it's uh, like these learning based methods um, really can optimize the proxy cost and actually, and not only that, they can optimize the true timing area of power uh, and congestion, which are correlated well with those proxy costs. Um, and this work generated a lot of interest and we're super excited about this. And we think this is just the beginning and really chip design and system design. Um, there are a lot of opportunities to really transform the way uh, they are, uh, done, uh, the, the work around their optimization uh, are done today. And here are some of the links to some of the papers on the chip placement work and other ML for combinatorial optimization work that we have been doing. If you're interested, please take a look. And uh, with that, I can conclude my talk and 
um, happy to take any questions. <laughs>